So last night, I watched The Suicide Squad, the latest entry in the DC Extended Universe and a kind of sequel to the original Suicide Squad. And that's something I want to get into right now, is that there, there, it's a trend in Hollywood nowadays to sort of continue a franchise by ignoring a bunch of the films in the rest of the franchise. They did this with the 2018 Halloween, where they ignored every film besides the first one. They did, the, did this with Terminator, with Dark Fate, ignoring everything after T2. And shitting on T2 in the process, but that's... I already rant about that in my feud with it against Star Trek Beyond, so that's... I'm not gonna get into that here. So it's becoming a trend in Hollywood nowadays to make these continuations by retconning everything else... But the weird thing about this one is that it wasn't doing it with a long franchise. It was doing it with one. Just one. If this was the fifth or sixth Su Suicide Squad film, I wouldn't be shocked that they were doing this. But this is the second. And I already can't, and right off the bat I couldn't tell, because James Gunn himself said it wasn't a sequel and it wasn't a reboot. Then what the hell is this? Because... Some of these, like, relationships between these characters have already been established from the first film, and they carry over into this film. Harley Quinn and Red Flag, Harley Quinn and Captain Boomerang, Captain Boomerang and Rick Flag. So pretty much everybody who was in the first movie, which are Harley Quinn, Rick Flag, Captain Boomerang, and Amanda Waller, they all know each other, and they act like the first film still happened. But, A, there's... It's... It, it has been established multiple times that this isn't a sequel. Had they just made this a sequel, it would have made more sense. Because Harley Quinn and Captain Boomerang and Flag, they're already part of the Suicide Squad. And it's already been established with a ton more characters this time, which I'll get into later. And one in particular I want to talk about quick is Bloodsport, played by Idris Elba. Now, we all know this was intended to be Will Smith as Deadshot, but Will Smith said no. I don't entirely remember why he said no, but he did, so... Because I, I know they wanted him back for this. They wanted him back. He's dead shot. I think there was a scheduling conflict or something. I don't know. But he said no, so they got Idris Elba. And a bunch of people thought Idris Elba was going to just replace him as dead shot. He was not. He is pretty much the exact same character. And that's a problem I have right off the bat, is that Bloodsport is just dead shot again. It's a, it's a black guy that has... Of, like, mastery over weapons, and it has family issues. That's, it's the exact same character. You can tell this was, right off the bat, you can tell this was supposed to be Deadshot, and they had to try to scramble to fix it by just changing the character slightly, and in the most minute way possible, and casting somebody else. I like it, now, I like Idris Elba, but he's not exactly a box office, as big of a box office draw as people think he is. Because this movie's not doing very well. And I did see, so I, I did see like a post somewhere on, on the internet that was like 10 reasons why the Suicide Squad underperformed at the box office. And one of them was Idris Elba is not the box office draw people think he is. And I totally agree with this. He's a great actor, but he's not exactly, a, I, wanna, I don't want to say he's not a leading man, because he can be. But he's not going to be the name that's going to draw everybody in. Because he's great in the Thor films, but he has like five minutes of screen time apiece. He, but then, and then you have movies like The Dark Tower, which not only were terrible, were box office bombs. And that was one of the ones he was headlining. And he was great in The Jungle Book, but again, he wasn't one of the main stream people bringing people in. I would say the main one was probably Bill Murray as Baloo, if I had to say. But that's, I'm getting off topic here by talking about Jungle Book. So, and also something else that was on the list was, was Margot Robbie's Harley Quinn is not the box office draw people think she is. And I, once again, I totally agree with this. I've never been a fan of Harley Quinn. Not, not just Robbie's interpretation, but ever. I've never liked Harley Quinn. She's obnoxious. She's not funny. And especially in the first Suicide Squad, after watching, like, Birds of Prey in this film... You can tell how bad she was in that film. Birds of Prey I hated too, but she was slightly better in that film. And this film, she's just out of character again. Like, the first film, it has 
a lot of out-of-character moments for her, like she's horrified by the fact that Diablo killed his kids. You aided and abetted the murder of Robin. And that was canon, because that was one of the things that was on her, like, list of things from the first film. She aided and abetted the murder of Robin, who was a kid. I'm assuming. In this universe, she was probably about 20-something by now, because Z Zack Snyder hates fun. But... So, so, you aided and abetted the murder of a kid. Why would this throw you off? And the same thing happens in this movie. Like, th there's a point in this film where some guy was... Somebody was experimenting on kids, and she calls this a big red flag. Excuse me, you were the, you killed kids as well. This is completely out of character. You, you don't think a movie like this would make the same mistake twice, but... Yep, it made the same mistake twice. So... Okay, I've ranted enough about why this movie underperformed. Let's talk about the movie itself. The main premise of this film is that the Suicide Squad has to go off to... Russia? I don't remember what continent they're on. I don't remember what country they're in. I don't remember where they are. They have to go to something called Jotunheim, which makes it even more ironic that Idris Elba's in this, to... Not the... Not the realm Jotunheim, but a... Like a, it's like a facility that they call Jotunheim, to shut down Project Starfish. Which, of course, as everybody knows, is the Star of the Conqueror, as we saw in the trailers. So, this is, so everybody knows, this movie is directed and written by James Gunn, who wrote and directed the Guardians of the Galaxy films, which are some of my favorite comic book films of all time. And he, he, his style really worked with that film. This seems like it should have this seems like it should have been a match made in heaven. Something like Tim Burton and Alice in Wonderland was also, but that was also a failure. This one kinda has the same problem. He did really well with the Guardians films being able to introduce all these different characters, give them their backstories, and do a phenomenal job with it. And and balancing humor and emotion. This film has some really has a really tough time balancing everything. It's like characters get backstories, but they're like 30 second long backstories. Kind of like the first film again, but at least it doesn't waste time with a bunch of flashbacks this time. But it's, instead, it just goes through exposition, which isn't that bad. But again, it doesn't tell us that much about these characters. We get some exposition on them. Like, we don't, we don't know anything about King Shark. We don't know much about Peacemaker. We know... The bare minimum, we know some about Polka Dot Man, but not much else after that. We don't know too much about Bloodsport apart from his family issues and why he has a fear of rats. And we don't know, and the most we learn about out of a character is Rat Catcher for some reason. Th that doesn't make sense. Why Rat Catcher? And so, so, and as you saw in the trailers, this movie has a huge roster. Not really. So, this is a spoiler review, who, who gives a shit at this point? This movie's already been out for a few days now, so... And since the movie's underperforming, if you haven't seen it, you're probably not going too soon. So... So, yeah, so... Th this had a huge roster, like, it had Javelin, it had a horrifying weasel, which I'll get to in a minute. Yeah, uh, TDK, the detachable kid, played by Nathan Fillion, by the way. I didn't even know, like, I saw Nathan Fillion on the cast list on Google, and he was on the opening credits. I had no idea who he was. Apparently, he was Detachable Kid. He had, what, two lines? A waste of a good actor. And speaking, and also, speaking of that, Tekka Watiti's in this film for 30 seconds. And has three lines. There's some waste some, of waste some more good talent. D did they lose a bet to Gun and they're... And he, they had to be in this film for 30 seconds apiece? Is that, was that the clause of the bet? I don't know. But, and Captain Boomerang is back from the first film, and it's... Black, the, the, the guy played by Pete Davidson, I can't remember his name. But, I don't know. And then there's Savan, played by Michael Rooker, and... So the, the interesting about this film, as it starts, is that it seems to be told through the eyes of Savan, played by, like, like I said, played by Rooker. And I thought, okay, so I had no idea who this guy was, because I don't, like, I don't read the Suicide Squad comics. I, I don't care about this team. I've never thought this was a, I never thought this was a smart series, but again, I'll get back to that later. 
So I thought this was an interesting idea, telling it through this guy's eyes, this new character, which makes a lot of sense. He's new to this whole team, so we can learn what's going on at the same time he does. Him and pretty much the entire squadron of this get killed right off the bat. Right off the bat. And the only ones who survive are the two people without superpowers. Harley Quinn and Rick Flagg, in the most bullshit way possible. I was happy that they were I'm like, holy crap, they're actually showing how expendable these people are by killing them all off. But nope, of course they have to have Harley Quinn survive to get a subplot that is utter garbage. Uh, uh, it's it's utterly terrible. And once again, it has callbacks to the, sui to the original Suicide Squad and Birds of Prey. So, is this a sequel or not? Just make up your mind, Warner Brothers. If it's a sequel, fine. But if it's not going to be a sequel, quit making references to the first film. Means you needed to get, you means you needed to recast everybody. And you need, or you need to just leave Flag and Boomerang and all of them out of it. Because you're screwing yourself over here. And that's part of another reason why this movie's underperforming. People don't know what this is. Is it a sequel? Is it a reboot? They won't tell us, so they don't want to see it. And I know because I watched this at home. I did not watch this in the theater because I didn't feel like going to see it in the theater. But then there, it turns out there's another group consisting of Peacemaker, Bloodsport, King Shark, Ratcatcher, and Polka Dot Man. And something that James Gunn does very well is that he makes lesser-known characters extremely badass. Like, he made Yondu awesome. He made Ego the Living Planet a very cool villain. He made a machine gun toting raccoon the most badass thing you've seen on screen in a while. He makes Polka Dot Man kind of cool in this movie. Uh, he doesn't make Star of the Conqueror cool. I couldn't stop laughing at Star of the Conqueror because I know it wants me to take this. I could take Eagle the Living Planet seriously, which is the testament to Gunn's skill. But in this, I could not take Star seriously. It had not. He has no character. It's just the generic take over the world plot. Same thing as Ronan the Accuser. You know, I think Ronan the Accuser was better because he at least had that awesome scene where Peter starts starts with a dance off and his just his reaction is he's just mo the most confused motherfucker you've ever seen in your life. And and uh, similar to Rocket Raccoon, we had this horrifying CGI weasel. I'm gonna be seeing that in my nightmares. And I guess that's a good time as any to transition into the effects. Doesn't look good. The, C the CGI Weasel is not only a horrifying looking design, it doesn't look good. The effect doesn't look good. Star like, there's a one point where the Thinker, who's also in this film, which oddly enough makes the Flash season 4 even worse because they couldn't even get the name of this guy right in, in that show. But... I, I've bitched about the Flash show enough. So, and he's like, he's like being held up like in front of this CGI starfish. It is painfully obviously a green screen. It does not look there at all. That entire background, including the starfish, looks so artificial. It took me out of the scene so bad. The CGI King Shark doesn't look good. And speaking of the Flash show, season two of the Flash made King Shark look better and more realistic in that sh in that low ass budget show than in a 185 million dollar budget. I will give credit Sylvester Stallone was freaking awesome as King Shark. And I like the character, not going to lie even though we don't know shit about him. But the effect does not look good. It looks pretty it looks pretty artificial. Now I've bitched about the bad things. Are there good things in this? Yeah, I like the action sequences. They're better than the first film because it's not just a Will Smith vanity project where he just steps on top of a car and just shoots a bunch of these faceless black blobs. They actually have enemies to fight. They're all, like, army men or actual people, but they're cool fight scenes, I'm not gonna lie. The one with, the, the one with Starro the Conqueror, though, is fucking awful. It's, it is so boring to watch. It's just... And the way this thing goes out is so stupid. It's taken down by Ratcatcher and Harley Quinn. Bullshit. And I, one thing I will... Also, something I want to bring up quick 
is that I knew this movie was going to be in trouble when I saw executive producer Zack Snyder. That's when I realized this movie may not be as good as I was hoping. Because I, pretty much on this channel, I'm pretty much getting a reputation for shitting on the DCEU whenever I can. I want this franchise to succeed. I like DC. I, I like a lot of the old DC films. I like the Dark Knight films. Well, the first two anyway. I like the... Tim Burton Batman movies. I like the first Superman movie. I, I like some of the DCU films. I like Shazam. I like Aquaman. I liked Wonder Woman. One, not two. One. So it's not like I intentionally shit on the DC films. It's just that they keep putting out shitty DC films. Like, I, I, this can't be that complicated. Marvel has been doing this for over a decade. They've been doing this since 2008, and they've had very few slip-ups. And when they've had slip-ups, they were still successful. DC cannot make more than one successful film in a row. They made Wonder Woman, which was a big hit, and then Justice League was a flop. They made a, a billion-dollar film with Aquaman, and then Shazam was a, was a box office disappointment, and then Birds of Prey was a box office disappointment, and then Wonder Woman 84 was a huge flop. And now this film is going to bomb as well, because it's already heading there. But, I was talking about the good things. I like the act. The acting's all fine. Joel Kinnaman's pretty good as Rick Flagg here. I'm surprised. I liked him in the RoboCop movie, mostly. Like, before he became the robot, though, he had no emotions to him whatsoever. After you get the suit on, though, he seemed to be giving a shit. And he was fine in the first film. Amanda... Or... Oh, what's the actual name? <laughs> um... Oh, my God. Who... The, the woman who plays Amanda Waller, why, why am I blanking on this so bad? It's, she does good in the role, but I can't stand this character. Like, I know you're not supposed to, but it was an extra, it was just that extra level. Even more than the last movie. To the point where she literally just wanted them to leave a bunch of people to die. God, I wanted her, them to actually shoot her, but she got hit with a golf club great he's like they knocked her out with a golf club I'm like yay but I'd rather if somebody have shot her in the head and I know why they didn't kill her because they're because th I have a feeling they're planning for another Suicide Squad movie if this one does well this one's not doing well it's doing well in reviews for some reason but box office wise this isn't gonna make its money back it's a 185 million dollar budget and it made I think 28 million domestically this is going to need a... Like, a rated, R film, rated R superhero films have done very well. The Deadpool movies, Logan, Joker, they did really well. But they were on lower budgets. The highest one of those budgets was $97 million, which was Logan. And... But the Suicide Squad has a $185 million budget. This thing would have needed to break records. To break even. It definitely wasn't going to break records, and it's not going to break even. This is going to be a huge box office bomb, and DC's going to need to pivot once again. And I, I want D the DCEU to be better. I really do, but it doesn't look like it's in the cards for them. Black Adam, I have no interest in. The Flash movie is going to suck. I guarantee it. Aquaman 2 is probably going to suck. The Batman is not ca is not canon even if that is good, even though apparently some reports have been saying that Warner Brothers hates the film and want to do reshoots, even though I guarantee that's just the Snyder cult again, trying to make people make Warner Brothers out to be the bad guy again, just because they're, they know their movies were, the Snyder films were shit, and it wasn't Warner Brothers' fault. So th that's just them trying to push back on the Batman because they're giving free reign to that film. But... Man, I did not enjoy this film w one bit. I like it wasn't it wasn't god awful. It was way better than the first one. But man, I do not understand it getting a ninety one percent on Rotten Tomatoes. I I do not get that. I I really don't. Like even when like even some of the films they hate when they get good reviews, I understand why sometimes. I understood why people liked Frozen, even though if that movie was stupid and filled with plot holes and annoying songs. I can get why some people liked Birds of Prey, even if I didn't, but... Man, why are people liking this one so much? This is not good at all. Again, it's not terrible, but it's watchable. 
I can give it that, but man, this was a huge letdown for me. I, I was expecting at least some mindless fun. All I got was mindless. A lot of the jokes don't really land. Some of the, quite a few of them do, but I can't believe I'm going to compare this to this, but Boss Baby Family Business had about 30% of the jokes hit. This one, around the same, maybe 35, 40 at most. But this had a lot of duds when it came to jokes. It had some pretty good ones. Like, I do like when Bloodsport is trying to get people to... How they're how he's getting them to fight Starro. Like, when he tells um, King Shark, he says, Shark, big monster num-num. He's like, big monster num-num? Yes, go. And he goes up and tries to eat him. And then but he says, poke dumb man. He's like, you see that? That's your mom. Like... You, if you see the movie, you get the you'll get the joke. If you see the, when you see the movie, if you haven't seen the movie and you're listening to this, you you won't get the you won't get it. Why that's funny? It'll just sound like a your mom joke, but it's not. It's way more creative than your mom joke. <laughs> so at least this movie has more dignity than the Last Jedi, and give it that because Last Jedi was so was so low that was so low that it gave it a that it put in your mom joke. God, I hate Last Jedi, but so yeah, this movie's better than Last Jedi if you can take that away from it. But man, this was a huge letdown. I was hoping this would be good. It wasn't. I didn't like this. I'm glad I didn't see it in theaters. I'm glad I watched it at home. And DC, get your shit together. The Batman better be good, because I don't think your canonical films next year are going to be good. And I, I have no faith in Black Adam or The Flash or Aquaman 2. Just, the Batman better be good. It really better be. So that's all I got for The Suicide Squad. I'm going to give it a 2.5 out of 5. I just didn't like this movie at all. It was, again, it wasn't a terrible film, and I can, I can get why some people like it, but overwhelmingly positive reviews, I don't get what the critics are seeing in this. I'm looking at the positive reviews, and I'm wondering if we watched the same film. I'm wondering if they watched Guardians of the Galaxy by accident. I really am. Thank you all so much for watching. Be sure to hit that like button down below, subscribe for more reviews like this, Tell me, what did you think of this Suicide Squad movie? Did you like it like everybody else? Did you hate, did you not like it like me? What did you think of the original? This one is, I don't think there's going to be a single person that's going to tell me the 2016 Suicide Squad was better than this. Because at least this film had its scenes in the correct order. Suicide Squad was a jumbled mess that had its scenes out of order. This film at least had the scenes in the correct order. So, take that for what it's worth, at least the scenes are in the right order. So that's all I'm going to say, and I'll see you all next time. Bye.